when it does, we can expect a real planetary transformation. I mean, the, unlike, the likes of which humans have never, ever seen before. The Green Movement, you know, there's all these terms for it, right? You mentioned a bunch, but actually 3% in 1959, and then by 1972, 15% of the people on this planet had a certain way of thinking. And one of the ways that I try to easily understand it is this notion that, oh, we're all on this planet and we're all kind of in this thing together. And it really was the birth of the green movement of like, hey, we got to take care of this place called home, which to most people that are hearing this, well, well, of course we all get that, but we have to understand that in 1912, if you went back in time, people just weren't thinking that way. They didn't have that lens, right? We didn't have that perspective. Is that an accurate way to kind of see very practically how the level plays out in the mind? Sure. And another easy way to remember this green postmodern pluralistic stage is that the boomer generation was the first generation to grow up with this green being the leading edge of their own thinking. So that's what, I mean, people generally, boomers themselves particularly love to notice how different their generation was from everybody else who came before. And most boomers, certain, I mean, I'm a boomer, but most boomers that I know, all of my friends, would write books, usually with the word paradigm in the title, about how they and their generation has a new paradigm. And it's kind of funny because you can see that what they meant was the integral stage. That's sort of the way they describe their new paradigm, which was green. They use terms that really apply only to the next stage, the higher, the truly second tier stage of integral. So, but they had themselves as a generation experienced a genuine vertical transformation because they came in with the smartest group of people on the planet were still at the rational stage of development. And they were moving from rational into the first post-rational or pluralistic or postmodern stage of development. So they, when they were writing their books on the new paradigm, they were drawing on their own experience of what it's like to come in as a generation at an early stage of this transformation and then catch it which they did, so that like one out of four, um, 25% of the population today is at that relativistic stage. Yeah. Okay, so now let's get to the juicy part, Like I cut you off right when you were going there, uh, but you know, then, so you know, obviously postmodern comes in, green comes in, we can understand that. Like we can see historically that this new level comes in and then something else started to happen, right? Uh, an even bigger shift started to take place, which is what had astonished Claire Graves and what has been kind of key right. in your work Talk to us about that. What actually started going? What is that integral level? What is second stage? Why was it so different? Right. And the stage I'm going to discuss now, which is the beginning of second tier stages, the beginning of integral stages. Keep in mind that today, depending on which model you use and whether you're talking about the first or the second stage of second tier development, only somewhere between four and at upper levels, seven or eight percent of the population is is actually reached those stages. And that's the way it it was with every previous stage as well. There would be some point where only three or 4% of the population was at that stage when it was first starting to emerge from the leading edge of its own leading edge of development. Um, So there were times when mythic first started to emerge and only 3% of the population where 97% of them were still at magic. Right. And so that you just sort of keep in mind that remembrance of how these stages are indeed unfolding. But even more than that, because, you, you know, you, you know, and you mentioned before the 10 percent number and we didn't go deep into that. But right. for my work with you, you know, the 10 percent is key because it's at around that number. And of course, it's not exact, but it's around that number where when 10 percent of the people are kind of resonating at that new level, right. it very quickly gets adopted to a larger point of the population. I think you're saying it because we're not there yet with integral and you haven't described it yet, but we're not there yet, but we're right. still from four to 7%. That's right. And what we find when we look back historically at how these stages emerged slowly and eventually became the majority of the population, but they weren't always at that. They started out at one or 2%, that went to 5%. When we find the population, 10% of the population reaches that leading edge, whatever that might be, whether it was magic or mythic or rational or pluralistic. When about 10% reaches 
that much because it tends to be the real leading edge where a lot of the smartest or most accomplished people are that the values of that leading edge tend to permeate the whole culture. That doesn't mean that everybody, when 10% of the population reach rational, for example, it began what we now call the age of enlightenment. But that didn't mean the entire population was at a rational enlightenment, about 10% were. But of course, the smartest people tended to gravitate towards that 10%. Um, and so we see the same thing happening when 10% of the population reach the postmodern or green stage of development. Their values really did start to permeate their culture. And so one of the things that happened is previous to the emergence of this relativistic postmodern stage of development, the only major competing stages that a lot of people were at were rational and mythic. And uh, in simplified terms, that turns out being religious versus science. Mm -hmm. Science was people mostly at the rational stage and religious were mostly people from a mythic stage. Mm -hmm. um, although we do recognize that there's a difference in religion between traditional religions and what we call waking up religions, just so people will know I'm not. Well, yeah, I mean, look, this topic is huge, you know, and this, yeah. this could be another like five yeah. books that you probably have yeah. already written. But let's get back into the, the integral level because we were headed there and I kept cutting you up. But I want to get there because it's big. We're heading for 10 percent there. Right. And so, and also keep in mind that the integral stage I'm about to discuss has not yet reached that 10%. Right. Although when it does, we can expect a real planetary transformation. I mean, the, unlike, the likes of which humans have never, ever seen before. And that's what all of the boomers thought they were indicative of, that they were all reached that extraordinary trends they have but anyway what happens with that postmodern relativistic stage is that technically cognition moves from a universal rational stage of development to a multicultural stage of development and that means that as green cognition looks down on and reflects on orange universal rational systems because it is a next higher level of development. It can look at all of those universal systems of development that orange rationality has come up with and it can differentiate them. And that's why it's called multicultural because it won't just take the universal systems of rationality like physics or chemistry or biology um, because if you buy into one of those, then you're erasing all differences between cultures. You're not realizing what uh, uh, specific cultures might have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so you are differentiating that orange, but you don't yet have the power to integrate those different differentiations. Mm -hmm. And development on the whole is a differentiation and then an integration. Mm -hmm. Differentiation and an integration. You can see this if you look at a zygote, which almost everybody has seen. We all start out as a single cell, and that single cell differentiates into four cells, mm -hmm. and those four cells differentiate into eight cells, and then 16 cells, and then 32, and so on. And at some point, those differentiated cells start to integrate into different systems in the body. So they'll integrate into a muscular system, a digestive system, a neuronal system, and so on. So green was smart enough to differentiate all of the universal systems that orange rationality had come up with, but it wasn't yet smart enough to integrate them. So one of the things that green brings us, and the reason that it's often called a relativistic stage, is just that it can, where orange delivers us with universal truths green does nothing of the sort it it gives us only multiply differentiated realities and